Okay, guys, we're going to do a little a little bit of experimenting with the bench and airflow because I'd like to get ahead of the, the game with that uh, dual plane, two barrel intake that's coming. And as my experience with intakes shows, especially uh, two barrel stuff like this throttle body injection. The reason I have this throttle body injection is I've got a guy in Detroit that's getting me some throttle body heads that I'm going to work up as as I did in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, I'm going to use this bone stock, and we're going to get some air values out of it. And then I'm going to show you exactly how I used to modify these. And actually, they're not bad stock when you modify them. I'll go through that piece by piece. And, you know, someone's going to say, why would you waste five minutes with throttle body injection stuff? It's junk. Well, the problem with throttle body injection is twofold. One, they made millions of them. Millions of them are still on the road. Two, they are drop dead reliable. Is it a great system? No, it's not. But I know people that have 260, 300,000 miles on these systems and they're, they're, they, they just don't stop. So I've been working on this since 88 throttle body injection. My 88 one ton had throttle body injection. At a whole 185 horsepower. It's the one ton, so it had lower compression. Ouch. 5,800 pound truck with 373 gears and a turbo 400. Talk about a slug. So, I've been fiddling with this stuff for a long time. Yes, you can buy, like, buy a Holley that has larger throttle bores. You can see I've already been fiddling with this. I've got clay stuck in because it has a lot of passes passages from one barrel to the other now that's one of the things we're going to talk about on when we get the two plane manifold for this uh, project whether the divider needs to be milled out let me dig up some uh, throttle body injection manifolds i have right here okay now this is a very old piece I think this was the original intake out of my 88. Some of the things that need to be pointed out on it. <sighs> Notice some welding here, right? This has been all changed here. This has had holes drilled in it. I did this very similar to that Visard uh, Brzezinski copy. Cut it for bigger throttle bodies. It actually cuts a little deep into the EGR. In fact, this actually had, it started to crack here, but it's just an EGR passage. You can see I had, I had epoxy over it when I was running it. Well, one theory is for a dual plane manifold is you put bigger throttle body holes in it, use a bigger throttle body. This had a Holly 670 on it that was modified and it ran fairly well for what it was. Obviously, the runners have all been gone through, and uh, it was pretty good. And the other way to go through a, a two-barrel intake for higher performance would be something like this. Okay, this is cut for the original size throttle body, but the it's been changed from a dual plane to a crappy single plane by, by changing the plenum. Now, this one actually has never been run. I modified this. In order to do this, though, you actually, when you modify the plenum like this, this will cut, this will cut into the water jacket. So it had to be welded. And, and I did it. I ported the runners and everything, and uh, it's never been tested. But it was an interesting idea. Now, when we get the dual plane for this Mission Impossible... This may be the way to go with that dual plane, is to literally make it a poor single plane so we can share the, the tiny amount of air we can get through those barrels. I'm going to have a discussion with DV if he'll ever pick up his phone, and we'll, we'll discuss which way it will go. First way I'm going to do it is I'm going to modify the dual plane like this. Okay. Now, as far as some... Some flow bench shenanigans. You guys will like this. All right, there's going to be a lot of pausing, 
unfortunately I have the bad pause button, okay? We're set up right now. Unfortunately, get the we get the flow. Um, <sighs> sorry, guys. Let's just take a look at this and see how we're doing with just this plate. A little bit cooler today. It's actually registering two CFM more than yesterday. Yesterday it was 199.7. I haven't touched the calibration. It is what it is. And for, for today, that's what it's going to stay at. Now, this was used for a throttle body injection. No, sorry. TPI. 58 millimeter throttle body that I modified. So I just cut it so I could get it on the bench so I could test it. Now, what would happen to this plate if you just put this over it, centered it the best you can? Would the flow go up or would the flow go down? It's an interesting question, right? Let's try it out. Okay, I don't have enough hands, so it was uh, it, it got pulled over. But that was an interesting little test. Notice how much more flow we got by using this, right? The air gets a chance to go around the radius, where it's going to be constricted because it's relatively sharp. And then it can straighten out before it hits before it hits our sharp edge orifice. The way it is here, you have air coming from this flat making it around and the faster it comes the more it would come into the center of your minimum contractor whatever they call that i should know yeah i know it looks it looks kind of hacked up but it really isn't as bad as you think in fact when you have everything lined up and you turn the bench on you don't get much leakage through it let's let's turn it on All right, guys, sorry about that. There's no way for me to do it all one time with uh, only two hands. So let me set this, let me set this up and open the throttle body. Sorry guys, it's gonna take a second. Let's see if we're close to zero. Okay, kind of interesting, right? Uh, that was through one barrel. The clay is here to keep it from stealing air from the other, the other barrel. Okay, so that was 223 CFM through a single barrel. That's actually too much for our testing because I don't think there's any way they can... Well, he might. He might. He might do it. 
I'm just guessing that he's going to take Andy I'm talking about from Unity Motorsports. I think he's going to get that to flow. You know what? I'm not even doing it right. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Got to change the depression to do this right. Uh, sorry. All right, I'm going to reset this for the correct depression, which we're going to use the same depression that DV used to when they tested that little two-barrel, which I believe was 20.39, which is 1.5 inches of mercury. All right, let me, let me reset this. In any case, the demo I did was all a 28. So you got a 200 CFM plate, right? If you put something like this in here, right? Which you could say, similar to opening up the barrels on that two barrel, right? That increased, that increased our flow. Let's do one more. Let's do one more experiment while we're set up at 28. Okay. This is one of my exhaust pipes. It's an inch and five eighths. I'm going to put this directly over the orifice. Now, the orifice by itself flows 200. What's it going to flow when I put this on it? Let's find out. Okay, you can see we went up we went up one degree and the motors and everything are hot right now and we are very close to our 200 with our calibration plate so that's always a good thing that's why I don't automatically just change my calibration it takes a while to get the calibration right this bench is really good that way it really doesn't need to be fiddled with much but you can see even though it's a smaller smaller diameter than the sharp edge orifice what it does is it gives the, the airflow a chance to straighten out. So it actually flows slightly more than the bigger size. Now, if I use this as my restriction to make believe it's my two barrel carburetor, I don't, I mean, I don't think he's going to be able to get it from 250 to 400. Okay. I may have to modify this even more. Let's just take a second. I'm thinking on the run here, guys, and that's not good because there's really not much happening in my head. Okay, if we take a 100 CFM plate and put it on top of this, what do you think we'll get? It's worth a shot. I hope you guys don't mind me experimenting while uh, I'm filming because... I figured somebody would enjoy enjoy watching me do this, as uh, unorganized as I may be. Okay. So, the 100 CFM plate flows more after it goes through this pipe, right? Same, same idea. It gets a chance to organize the flow, and it's, it takes a step up. Same idea as when we put a, a pipe on our exhaust pipe, you know, our exhaust uh, port. Same idea. So... I want some input from you guys. Do you think this would be an acceptable alternative with the inch and five eighth pipe and a uh, hundred CFM plate on it to get an idea what the modified 
two barrel carburetor would flow? Let me know in the, in the comments, guys. Uh, manifold will get here in a couple days, and I'm, I'm trying to work out the, the bugs in my head to uh, best way I can accomplish relatively accurate flow checking, even though I don't have a, a modified carburetor to do it with. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out.